Yes. On that subject, I own one too. I actually own two. But um, what's your collaboration? Like mine is 14. Mine, mine's minus 12. Yeah, and I did it in conjunction with Josh. We worked it out. It took a while. I, I, where did we start it? We started because remember it made the console play back at different levels from the the two versions. So we started at minus 18 with it, and ended up at minus 12. But it was without a lot of conversation and Josh coming over to my house and us playing around with it. But so your output goes minus 12, and then back minus 12. Yes, it's 12 minus 12 in and out. You yes. said you printed 96? Yes. Is the session at 96? Or? The session's at 48, and I print at 96, the mix. You record it back in Capture. I don't record it back into Pro Tools. I record it into another machine completely yeah. separate, yeah, at 96K. It goes out of 48 into that machine at 96. What I've found, a lot of people, like, if you use 48 in a, in a Pro Tools session and you print back to that machine at 48, there's a degradation that you can hear. You really can hear it. Whereas when I print back at 96, I can hardly hear any at all, even though it's starting at 48. So one of the things that I learned when I was you know, starting out as an engineer, and Dave Hassinger always said, never duplicate anything. Because when you do, there's some kind of mathematical thing that happens that makes things not sound as good as if you don't duplicate them. So I've always sort of lived by that theory. Say that again? An example of that? Yeah. M mixing at four, recording at 48 and mixing at 96. Right. But are there other examples, though? I mean, because I've, I've heard the electronic ringing using the same console for mixing can cause a lot of that added coloration. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of it right now, but there was a, always there was this constant sense of if I recorded an analog track, I'm sorry, yeah, thanks. If I recorded an analog track at, at 15 IPS, I mixed at 30. Make sense? Just seemed to sound better to me. Yeah. Uh, when you're mixing, do you pan between left, right, and center? No. No, I don't like that. I'm not a big moving fan. <laughs> I, I I try to place things, you know, where I like them, and I pretty much. I mean, he can tell you he sat next to me for a couple of years now. I pretty much start out the same way. I like the hard rhythm stuff on the right, and the things that pop at you on the left. And anything that I think is out of the ordinary, I want that loud. <laughs> you know, yeah? So everything is hard pan, you know? Like, I'm not even well, I mean, you know, that's usually the starting point, yeah. I mean, it, it can change, but for the most part, the two main instruments in the track, I try to keep them pretty spread. And, and I have my speakers in my studio are probably uh, as far apart as from where I am to that speaker for the tannoys that I use. And, and the reason I have them so far apart is because if you want to start slicing up increments, when speakers are close together, then the increments are really small, you know? Whereas if it's wide, it's like, okay, well, from there to there, you can hear that. From, from when they're like close together, from there to there is like, it's hard to discern that. So I like the speakers that I mix on to be farther apart. And then, and then inside of that, I have a, a brand new pair of the new ATCs two-way passive speakers. I don't like the powered ones. To me, you make speakers and you make amps. You don't do both. How so. far apart feet-wise, uh, Between the, the tannoys and from here to there, from where I am to that speaker. It's seven feet across my console, and they're on the outside edge, so however far apart that is. Yes? Do you have a typical uh, drum room mic uh, configuration? Yes, absolutely. Typically, I, I, I use, uh, for overheads on analog drums, Telefunk and 251s, which I love the sound of those for overheads because not only are they punchy, but they're warm. And um, it's a shame as to what's happened to the cost of them now because, I mean, you know, a pair of those are probably 30 grand. But they sound sen sensational. Uh, Tom Toms I use probably on the top, if they have two Tom Toms, I'll use two 421s, and the bottom I usually use a, a, a FET 47 on the floor tom. 
and kick drum I use a 421 on the uh, front close and then the sub kick outside and a uh, hi-hat I use that ECM 50. Anything pick up the room sound back? I'm not a big room sound guy. I mean, room sounds to me, when you're mixing pop records, is a complete waste of time because you're looking for presence. And all that room sounds do is take the presence away and create a room sound. So, you know, if you're doing a rock band, that's a different story, you know, whole different sense. When I was mixing the Queensryche stuff, it's a whole different mindset than trying to mix, you know, a pop record. Which album was it? Uh, take Hold of the Flame which I think was their first record. Mm -hmm.